DETV News is powered by DART, Delaware's transit service, moving forward. Tonight, former Delaware auditor looks to get back into public office. Plus, former UD president David Roselle dies at 84, and Dover is named a top southern city. Those stories and much more straight ahead on DETV News. Hello and welcome to this DETV News Brief. I'm Patty Nash. Thanks for being with us. Making headlines today, former Delaware Auditor of Accounts Kathy McGinnis has thrown her hat into the ring for state representative in the 14th House District in the Rehoboth Beach area. Despite a previous conviction for conflict of interest related to hiring her daughter, McGinnis is pressing forward with her political ambitions. Notably, two misdemeanor charges from her 2022 trial have been eliminated. The Delaware Supreme Court threw out one charge, and the Attorney General's office has announced it will not pursue a retrial on the second misdemeanor. McGinnis officially filed her candidacy on Monday with the Delaware Department of Elections, while a committee named Friends of Kathy McGinnis has also emerged. With longtime Speaker of the House Pete Schwarzkopf stepping down, the September 10th primary will feature a heated Democratic race in the 14th District, with McGinnis facing competition from two other candidates. Former University of Delaware President David Roselle died peacefully Monday following a brief illness. The Pennsylvania native led the university through transformation in his 17 years as UD's 25th president. University leaders said in a statement that the university community still benefits from his impactful tenure. After earning a doctorate in mathematics from Duke University, he taught and held leadership positions at the University of Maryland and Virginia Tech. In 1990, Roselle was named president by a unanimous vote of the Board of Trustees. Under his leadership, UD's endowment grew from $362 million to $1.2 billion. He oversaw the addition of the Bob Carpenter Center, several academic labs and art studios. UD also added three locations around the state. After he stepped down in 2007, he became the executive director of Winterthur Museum. He retired in 2018 to spend more time with his family, including his wife of 56 years. A House bill introduced by state reps Franklin Cook and William Bush would expand mobile sports betting in the first state. House Bill 365 came from the Internet Sports Lottery Legislative Working Group, which was formed last year. The bill would allow casinos to partner with multiple sports books, and supporters say it would benefit both marketplace competition and state revenue. It's estimated the uptick in gambling would generate $400,000 for a program to treat problem gamblers. The bill, was, the bill was assigned to House Administration Committee for consideration. Suspects are in custody for two separate homicides in Dover over the weekend. A 15-year-old male died Sunday night at the scene of one of the shootings in the area of South Governors Avenue and West Reed Street. Police said a group of suspects amb ambushed the victim as he was walking in the area. 19-year-old Brashawn Best was identified as a suspect and was taken into custody without an incident. He was being held on $1 million cash bail. Early Sunday morning, two people were shot in the area of Irish Mike's along West Lockerman Street. 25-year-old sincere friends of Dover died after being taken to area hospital, and a 30-year-old Magnolia woman was injured. 23-year-old Sadiq Ingram of Dover was later arrested during a traffic stop in Milford. He was also being held on $1 million cash bail. A Delaware State Police trooper has pleaded guilty to the assault of a teenager. Corporal Corey Bailey admitted to the crime in Newcastle County Superior Court. The incident, which occurred last May, involved Bailey kicking a 16-year-old suspect in the head during an arrest. The victim suffered injuries and was treated at a local hospital. 
Bailey's guilty plea comes after an investigation by the Delaware Department of Justice and the Office of Civil Rights and Public Trust. Sentences, sentencing is scheduled for June 21st, where Bailey faces a maximum of two years in prison and a $6,300 fine. Four teenagers are in custody after leading Delaware State Troopers and officers from several police departments on a chase that started in Bethany Beach and ended at the Rehoboth Beach Boardwalk. The incident started when a car drove away from a traffic stop shortly before 7.30 p.m. Troopers pursued the car into Dewey Beach but cut the chase short due to high speeds. A state police helicopter tracked the car until it crashed at the boardwalk and Olive Avenue. All teens ran away but were caught by officers. Police said the car driven by the teens was stolen from Dover and they had also found a gun in the car. All teens were being held at the Stevenson House Detention Center. A 50-year-old Millsboro man received multiple charges over the weekend when he crashed his car into the Georgetown Circle. According to police, Daniel J. Tansky was speeding on West Market Street toward the circle at about 12.30 a.m. when he crashed into the circle without slowing or stopping. The car struck a curb, launching it into the air, and struck a sign before landing on a fire hydrant in the circle. Tansky was taken to an area hospital for his injuries and was charged with reckless driving and unreasonable speed. The damage estimate is pending. The Indian River Volunteer Fire Company responded to an outdoor fire in Sussex County on Sunday night. The blaze was located on Long Neck Road near Fairfield Development. Officials said the brush, marsh reeds, and vegetation caught fire, requiring additional evaluation because of windy conditions. Dover, Delaware has secured a spot among the South's best cities on the rise in Southern Living's April issue. Recognized for its flourishing downtown and vibrant food scene, Dover marks its presence alongside 24 other up and coming destinations. Highlighted in the magazine's coverage is Dover's ambitious Capital City 2030 plan, aiming for a transformative decade ahead. Envisioned are enhancements such as a multimodal transportation hub, expansive commercial developments, green spaces, residential units, and a river walk. City Council President Bill Hare acknowledges Dover's existing attractions, but sees Southern Living Spotlight as a significant stride toward national recognition. Mayor Robin Christensen echoes the sentiment, e emphasizing the project's role in fortifying Dover's vitality. As for Delaware's Southern identity, geographically on the border of historical and cultural factors, including its art cultural heritage and moderate climate contribute to its Southern reputation, despite its union allegiance during the Civil War. The Eastern Wilmington Riverfront is poised for an upgrade. The Wilmington Riverfront Transportation Infrastructure Project aims to revitalize the area while addressing environmental concerns. Public input is crucial in shaping the project said city consultants who are considering a range of factors from social and cultural impacts to environmental justice. The goal, said consultants, is to create a vibrant space for all. You can find a draft environmental assessment and have your say in the future of the area by visiting riverfronteastconnect.com. A bridge in southern Newcastle County that floods is set for replacement, and the project has qualified for a $15 million federal grant. The Taylor's Bridge on Route 9 near Town's End will be raised to reduce the effects of sea level rise and climate change. The number of piers will be reduced to improve the water flow, and retaining walls will be built to reduce impact on area wetlands. There is no exact timetable for the project. Delawareans are urged to participate in the 26th National Prescription Drug Take Back Day on April 27th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. To dispose of expired or unused medication, this biannual event 
crucial for curbing prescription drug misuse, has already amassed nearly 120,000 pounds of medication in Delaware since 2010. To ensure proper disposal, medications must be in containers with personal information removed, while liquid medications should remain in their original containers. Vape pens and e-cigarettes will be accepted if batteries are removed. Approximately 20 sites across Delaware will be available for drug disposal, though none are located in the Brandywine 100, Hocass Center, Pike Creek areas. The Drug Enforcement Administration provides an updated list of participating sites, emphasizing the importance of safe medication disposal. That's all for this edition of DETV News. Be sure to follow us across all of our social media platforms. And for a look at what's happening all around the state of Delaware, take a look at our website at detvch.com. With DETV News, I'm Patty Nash. We'll see you next time. We don't talk about prostate cancer enough, and it's the most diagnosed form of cancer and the second most common cause of cancer death among black men in both Delaware and the United States. Approximately one in eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime, but just by asking your healthcare provider if you should get a screening could help you detect prostate cancer early and save your life. So let's talk about it. Talk to your healthcare provider today about a prostate cancer screening if you are 40 years of age or older or have a family history of prostate cancer. If you don't have insurance or if your insurance doesn't pay for cancer screenings, Screening for Life may provide you with the screenings that you need and nurse navigators make this process easier. To learn more, visit healthydelaware.org slash prostate or call 211. Ask your healthcare provider about a prostate cancer screening and you're asking for so much more.